what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Uh, I want to talk Jane Daniels here. Uh, because there's been a lot of, you know, the, I, I saw some stuff earlier like, uh, well, we're just lucky that LSU, that, that K.J. Jefferson was hurt for the Arkansas game, otherwise you would have lost that. And, look, I, I, I understand you didn't play great against Arkansas. Now, I do hate that logic, though, right, because you never know. Like, that's such a th- – the whole game goes differently if another quarterback. Like, whatever. The point is, like, you don't know. You, the butterfly effect. You change that and everything ends up changing. But I want to talk about Daniels because the other conversation that I saw taking place uh, kind of that spun off of that – was this idea that Jaden Daniels is who he is. And I understand how you arrive there because he has been uh, starting for about a million games. <laughs> My problem with this logic, though, Jake, is that if you just look at his career numbers, he's been two different people. Yeah. So you can't really say he is who he is or his ceiling has been met because you've already seen the volatility. The freshman year was incredible. The 17 touchdowns and three picks. The next two years were not good. Coleman in his third year where he had the, had the 10 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. And then he comes back last year and he gets back to that 17-3 to 3 ratio. And completes nearly 70% of the pass. Those are 3,000 yards. Rushes for 11 more touchdowns. So the point is... Even within what we've seen out of him, you can't really say he is who he is because he's been wildly different guys. And, again, the thing you're all ignoring is he's in an infinitely better spot at LSU than he ever has been previously in his career. Returns all the weapons, returns all the coaches. Again, the coaching quality is much better. The facilities, everything else. Now he's the leader. He's QB1. He's coming to FCC Media Days for a reason. Like, to, to act like his story is written or that there's no room for improvement is is just absurd to me. Yeah, I think there's certain room for improvement. When you look at the totality of, like, his career, though, even with that bad season in 2021, he's thrown for almost 9,000 yards, completed 65% of his passes. He's thrown 49 touchdowns to only 16 interceptions. Like, I, I'll be honest with you. Like, I, I didn't think if we put everything together that they would look that good just on the surface, but they have. But he's gotten – He's gotten better from 2021 to 2022, certainly. And when when you look at the numbers, obviously he throws more passes, throws seven less interceptions. He throws more touchdowns. He throws more yards, has, you know, three – three points added on his completion percentage. Like, all those are great things. He ran for more yards. He ran for more touchdowns. But still, you think there's a level – let's say he's, you know, out of ten, like – I think last year it was like a seven and a half. There's yeah. still yeah, room yeah. for yes. improvement. Yes. Like there's still things that he can improve on. Yes. And now you've got another year with Denbrock, with Kelly, with Joe Sloan as your quarterback coach. Like I expect it to go up to get closer to that ten than it has been. When you like you take A and M game, Arkansas game, like those are the games. Like you got to get more consistent in those type of games. Now you don't have to be on the Florida, Ole Miss, Alabama heater necessarily that you were on all year long, but your your dips. You just want to have those dips maybe go to more midline than what they were. He is, but but he does have the potential to keep that heater going on, right? That's he why he has the second best Heisman odds. And again, if you're saying he's a known quantity, there's no room for improvement. Well, then explain me the 21 to 22 improvement, right? Because he had still started uh, 29 games going into last season, and yet he jumps up, like you said, three percentage points completion. He jumps up uh, or is five, over 500 yards throwing the ball, goes up seven touchdowns through the air, down seven yeah. picks, goes up five touchdowns on the ground, rushes for over 100 more yards. So, no, I mean, I, the, 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 this guy's the limit for him. And, again, he has a wide receiver room that is the envy of maybe everybody save for Washington in the country yeah. right now. Yeah, I mean, Washington and Ohio State are the only teams yeah, that well, are, State, are kind sure. of in that conversation, but LSU is certainly in that top three group. And then you look at the tight end position. Think about how how much more advanced you are at this portion already than you yep. were last year. True. I mean, you had a true freshman, Mason Taylor, trying to play the position against Florida State. Uh, he's on special teams still. Like, he's trying to do a lot. Like, now that's a all-conference type player. And then you brought in another, you know, slew of tight ends, but like you bring in Anderson from Alabama. So you've now got a rapport with your top three receivers yep. and your tight end that you didn't have last year. And you had Kayshawn that you're trying to force the ball to. And again, 
we all would have tried to force the ball to Kayshawn. Like, he was supposed to be an All-American first-round pick. All of that's gone, and you have what made you comfortable coming back. Yeah. Yeah, it can go up. It can, I mean, honestly, T, he throws for 2,900 a year ago. If he threw for 3,400 this year, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, okay, so that's actually a really good exercise. If you just play the exact – let's just play the exact same growth and think about what that would look like. So, yeah, that would be 3,400 yards. You would throw for 24 touchdowns. You would uh, rush for, like, 15, 16 touchdowns if he, if he improved yeah. the same. Like, yeah, man, that's, that, that is not unrealistic. That is not unrealistic. And so, no, I'm a, I'm a firm believer – in the uh, the the high end potential of Jaden Daniels, and the thing that you can't quantify that is the biggest deal to me remains the um, the fact that he that that he is the leader of the team, yeah, and that he's been in this situation. He knows these teammates and gone to the culture shocks and everything else. And I'm not saying he's gonna have a Burrow like jump, but look at the jump that Burrow had when he had that same confidence. When he went from competing the job to, no, no, you are unquestioningly, you are the man, and that empowers you as a player. Like, what's the one thing you want Jaden Daniels to do? To take more risks. How do you empower a player to take more risks? Let him know he's your guy. Like, he is the man. He is the starting quarterback, and everybody looks to him. And so, uh, I think I, th- I think, I think he's going to, I think he's going to, I think he's going to be a star. Wow. Jake. What incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post every single day here on OTB LSU.